All right, so in uh, exercise seven, we're, we're looking at finding the cube, cube root of an integer. And, um, you know, just as a, a, as a definition, right, um, a, a, the cube root of x is some number y that if you, um, you know, you do y times y times y or y cubed, it'll be equal to x. Um, so it's similar to the square root, um, where y squared would equal x, but now it's the cube. Um, <clears throat> there's a number of different ways to do this. Um, we're going to bank on the fact that, that the user is typing in first off an integer and we're just looking for an integer cube root. So that makes makes things um, a little bit easier and a little bit more, um, it's a little bit more practical to use a technique called exhaustive enumeration. And this was described directly in the textbook. Um, so just to uh, give you an idea of what um, what the algorithm really is doing, we'll switch over to, um, to, to sketch this out. So the, um, the, the premise of exhaustive enumeration is really just uh, taking advantage of a n the number line um, to figure out um, how, what, the, what the cube root of a particular value is. So I'm going to draw a number line out here. I don't, you know, it's, it's going to go out to, to whatever, right? I'm just going to put a couple of dots there. Um, but, you know, we'll have uh, one, two, three, four, five, and, you know, all the way out. All right. And so um, let, let's, let's think about um, finding the cube root. All right. So we've got the cube root of uh, eight. Eight would be the first sort of non-trivial um, number that we can find a perfect cube root of. The, the idea of exhaustive enumeration is to start at one um, and just compute, you know, if we want to call this i, just compute i raised to the third power, right? And of course, that's that's um, that's one, right? And and that's not going to give us the answer. And then we just we increment, right? So we go i to two, right? Now two to the third is actually equal to eight, and so we found it, right? And that's a pretty it's a really a pretty trivial, um, trivial uh, answer. Um, let's say we're going to try to find the cube root of uh, nine instead. Right? So we we proceed through the same thing. We we try to get um, we do i uh, one square uh, one cubed. We do we do two cubed, right? and that gives us eight, which is not the answer. And then we get here. We we do three cubed. And 3 cubed is just 3 times 3, which is equal 9, times another 3, which is equal to 27. Right? Well, 27 is larger than the value 9 that we're looking for. And what that's really telling us is that the actual cube root between uh, of of nine is somewhere between it must lie in the number line somewhere between the eight and the nine. Right? That that's the only way whatever number um, or, or I'm sorry must be between the two and the three, not the eight and the nine. Right? It must be between the two and the three. Um, so there's no perfect integer cube for. Nine. There's no perfect integer cube root of nine um, because once we hit three, we're all the way out to 27. And of course, four times four times four is going to be even larger. Um, so the algorithm of exhaustive enumeration is to basically just start at one. And for most cube roots, we're going to have to go much, much further than this. But f but uh, we're going to go across the number line and until, until we find either a match like we did with eight um, for two cubed or we find a number that is greater than the value we're searching for. So if we're searching for nine, we found that immediately when we found three cubed. Um, so at this point, we can switch back to the code and we can start to, to develop that algorithm. So I'm going to get an, uh, an x value from the user. And I'm going to come up with that i value. So i equals, let's say, 1. And I'll say while, while i cubed, and remember in Python we can use the double asterisk to, to calculate the cube, while it's less than the absolute value of the value the user typed in, 
All right, and I'm just doing an absolute value just in case they typed in a negative number or something like that. I don't want to have things go haywire. While it's less than it, I want to basically just keep going. Keep moving to the right of the, you know, on a number line. Um, now notice I didn't say while it's less than or equal to, right? So basically you have two conditions where this loop is going to stop. When you get out of this loop, either i cubed is x, which means we found perfect cube root, or it's greater than x, which means there is no cube root. Right? And so that's a simple if statement. Right? So if i cubed is equal to x, cube root of x is i. Otherwise, there is no perfect cube root of x. Um, and so, so this solution works pretty well. Um, let's, let's run it and make sure we don't have any bugs. Uh, so I'll do cube root of 8 should find two. Uh, cube root of 27 should find three. Um, if I type in nine, it should come up no perfect cube root. 15, no perfect cube root. Um, no cube root of, of 81. I'm trying to think of uh, what's you know four cube root. Yeah, so let's say uh, um, you know, 64. Um, four times four times four is 64. So it looks looks like we've got this answer. Uh, we've got this solution pretty well. So this exhaustive enumeration works very nicely. Um, it, it works predominantly because uh, we're only dealing with integers. If we had to deal with um, decimal point values, exhaustive enumeration becomes a little bit more computationally expensive. Um, the, the textbook talks a little bit more about that, and we're going to be delving into that in some of the, the future exercises.